Previously, on the Venezia FC career mode, we promoted to the Serie A for the first time in the new era of this club. But can we defy the odds and survive? It's time to find out. Right. Music. Luca Lezzerini. Luca will need to be the one to step up big time. He was amazing in the Serie B, but the Serie A is a completely different animal. But with 19 clean sheets last season, I don't think we need to worry too much. Defenders. We got Gian Filippo Felicioli and Alessandro Semprini as our fullbacks. Both have plenty of room to grow, but it'll be interesting to see how they do in this area. Nicolo Armini. Captain Italia went off in the Serie B. Once he started consistently being in the starting 11, he became exactly what I promised. A hero. Marco Modolo. Oh, whoops. Marco Modolo. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's kind of old though. Midfield. Franco Zuccolini and Lorenzo Lolo were one of the main reasons for much of our success last season. You had Lorenzo with 12 assists and even contributing with 10 goals in all competitions. Then there was Franco making every tackle he could while also contributing to 13 of our goals. Can this duo continue their success? Attackers. Luca Fiordellino. I said it before and I'll say it again. Future legend. He was so dangerous against oppositions and that he could score from time to time. Not only that, he led the Serie B in assists with 12. Fiordellino is going to be absolutely vital this season and I can't wait to see what happens. Ricardo Sotil. Ricardo is the main man to watch out for the most. He looked very promising in his first season with Venezia. 9 goals, 10 assists. And keep in mind, he wasn't playing in his preferred position for two thirds of the season. I have high hopes for this kid. Mattia Adamu. Mattia did not start many matches but I could see flashes of greatness from him. He played a lot at right wing off the bench, which is why he starts for us at that same position now. Alessandro Capello. With Samuele gone, Capello will finally have the opportunity to become our main striker. With 10 goals and 5 assists in all competitions, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Capello adapts to this area. Transfers. So in our first season, the board supplied us with about 3 million. So it would only make sense for them to maybe give us a boost you! Shut the f up! Your dick is small! So in our first season, the board supplied us with about 3 million. So it would only make sense for them to maybe boost that up next season since we promoted. Oh, you'd be wrong. As a result, we had to sell more than I really wanted to. So, we sold Francesco Di Mariano for 5 million, Ricardo Boccalon for 950k, and finally, Mattia Aramu for 7 million. But hey, we did invest in a new youth academy. Pretty excited about that at least. Oh come! <laughs> Alessio Riccardi. So let's get one thing straight. This, this is absolutely not it, Chief. But that's okay because we let the city do the looks for us. Anyways, from one beautiful city to another, Alessio finds himself at a club with more opportunity for him at the moment. Our midfielders will decline sooner than later and Riccardi will be the rebirth of our midfield without any doubts. He's got plenty of room to grow and will inevitably be such a key player for us. 4.2 million, absolutely magnifico. Dylan Mbayo, hailing from Belgium, our first foreign signing during my tenure. Let's call him the Belgian Bolt, because my god, he's going to take the Serie A by storm. Fullbacks in the Serie A aren't particularly that quick, and I think Dylan is about to expose them more than how the coronavirus has exposed our healthcare system. <laughs> Jokes aside though, Dylan Mbayo has 82 potential and he's going to be that extra punch we need to survive this year. 5 million. Done deal. Well men, welcome to the most beautiful city built by men. You are going to help build the most beautiful club. So with this squad, can we survive? Or even outperform the odds? Well, let's find out. So we start our campaign once again in the cup, but this time it's against Salaire 
Nitana. 36 minutes played, it's Ricardo Sotil on the ball. He passes it to Capello. Capello turns his defender, and then, well, he takes the shot. It's off the crossbar on the right side of the crossbar, too, and it's 1 0 to Venezia. A great start for us this season already. 67 minutes played now, the first chance for Salah and Nitana. This match was very, very defensive. Nothing much happened here, but Acro Akpo to Jalo in the middle, and it's 1 0. But just like last season, Venezia with another attack attack in the last minute of the match and this time it's Capello once again turns his defender and makes it 2-1 to Venezia just like that we advance in the cup just like that and let's go on to the first match in the Serie A please Torino do I remember when I said the Serie A would be a much bigger problem well here's exhibit A well this is the day his debut day. big day for him Oh, and then another thing about this match, we should have scored. Spezia. 42 minutes played, it's Fiordalino on the ball, he's trying to find someone, it's Capello, Capello to Yusuf Male, and Male across his own defender and past the keeper, 1-0 to Venezia, Yusuf Male scoring the first Serie A goal for Venezia this season. But Spezia had other things on their mind as Matteo Ricci gets past Semprini to Bidoy to Mora, back to Bidoy, that's a weird ass name by the way, but anyways, it's one all. Just like that. Spezia not done just yet though. It's Bartolome to Galabinov. Galabinov to Matteo Ricci. Matteo Ricci does Yusuf Male like he's nothing. And Matteo Ricci threw ball to Mora. And Mora makes it 2-1. The turnaround for Spezia. It's not looking very good for us so far. 74 minutes played. Venezia trying to find one back. At least one back. It's Ricardo Sotil. Yusuf Male to Embayo in the box. And he gets fouled. Clearly gets fouled. That's no mistake whatsoever. And thank God the referee caught on to that one because, man, uh, these refs can sometimes be a little. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza. Nonetheless, it's Ricardo Sotil to bury it into the back of the net. Two all. That's how the match would end, but that is a vital point for us. It's better than none. This looks familiar? That's right. This is Orsolini's club. This match was by no means very easy whatsoever as it's Gary Medell. He passes it to Orsolini to Sansone and Sansone gets the shot saved by the keeper. On the follow-up, it's a corner for Bologna here. Nothing comes of it, but they still have it. It's Poli. He takes the shot. It's blocked by Mbayo with his head. It's now Denswell on the ball. Denswell gets past his midfielder, his defender, and, well, blasts it into the back of the net to make it 1-0 to Bologna. But Venezia, we're not gonna just let something like that fly by them. I mean, this is the Serie A. Obviously, things will be a lot difficult here. But look, it's Mbayo. Well, that's unfortunate. But as I was saying, the Serie A might be a different animal, but Venezia were not gonna go down without a fight here, as it's Semprini. Great ball to Mbayo. Mbayo passing it to Capello. Capello threw ball to Fiordolino, and Fiordolino isn't gonna miss from there. It's one all at Bologna. And we have some hope here, boys. Now 30 minutes played, another chance for Bologna. It's Gary Medell this time to Orsolini, and it's a great save by Letzerini. And then right before the end of the half, another chance for Bologna here. Actually, no. What a tackle by Zuccolini here. He passes it to Capello. Threw ball to Sotil. Sotil with a ton of room to just find the back of the net or do something with it. And he hits the post. Now 50 minutes played. It is Dylan Mbayo on this wing with the blazing pace that he has. He can easily do something here. He cuts inside, passes it to Capello. And it hits the post. Now 60 minutes played, another chance for Venezia. It's Fiordolino. Fiordolino threads it to Lolo. Lolo then passing it to Capello. And Capello, all you gotta do is just finish it here. How is this even possible? And now one of the biggest challenges yet. 
Roma. Five minutes played, it's a counter-attack already for Venezia here, as it's Capello. He passes it to Semprini. Semprini, then passing it to Fiorellino. Fiorellino with the great ball of dreams to Dylan and Bayo, and Dylan is just not gonna miss from there. The Belgian Bolt makes it 1-0 against Roma. 40 minutes played now, it's an attack for Roma. It's Schick, passing it to Spinazzola. Good ball to him, to Zaniolo now. Back to Spinazzola. Spinazzola is waiting to find someone now. He passes it to Matic, back to Schick, to Diorara, back to Schick, and Schick takes the shots, and I mean, that's a pretty simple save for Lazzarini. But Roma weren't done yet, it's Diorara once again, he's still on it, he gets tackled, but it goes right to Schick, and Schick takes the shots, and that's another great save by Lazzarini. Fast forward to the second half now, and it is a counter-attack for yours truly. It is Zuccolini on the ball. He sees the run by Dylan and Bio. Dylan all by himself. Sayonara, suckers. You ain't catching the Belgian bolts. He makes it 2-0. It's two goals in four appearances in his first four appearances for Dylan and Abayo. Roma just desperate to find something, but that just leaves their defense even more open as it's Capello, and Capello with the little chop, and it's to Abayo once again. The Belgian Bolt once again just by himself, and he has himself a Hattie in his fourth appearance for the club. You love to see it, don't you? Genoa. Well, this match was a bit different because not much really happened, but it's Ricardo Sotil on the edge of the box. He runs inside, gets tackled. Is that really a foul because he kind of got the ball i mean i'm not too sure the refs i'm gonna refrain from making that joke again anyways it's ricardo so <laughs> got gotcha you again and now time for a rivalry match yeah it's finally happened it's against udinese though how do i put it simply Udinese dominated us in this match, but it's Shinar, he crosses it in, and it's a good save by the keeper. We fast forward into the 44th minute now, as it's Wallace on the ball. Wallace passing into Fofana, Fofana, he brings it to Barak, Barak then completely just messes around with our entire defense, takes the shot, and once again, Letzerini with his stretched out body makes the save. We go into the 69th minute, where it's a pretty bad clearance, it goes right to an Udinese attacker. <laughs> Now, just a little bit later, it's Wallace on the ball. He passes it to Perica. Perica takes the shot. And once again, it's Letzerini there to save the day. On the following corner, once again, it's Fofana. He whips it in. It's a decent clearance, but it goes out to DeMaio, to Nestrovsky. And Nestrovsky is going to take a shot. It's a pretty good save, once again, by Letzerini. I swear, to this day, of me writing up this script and voicing over all this stuff, I have no idea how we didn't concede in this match. Wait, I got it. Conspiracy theory. Could Let Serini be a product of a Donnarumma cloning facility in Milan? Tune in next time on the History Channel. I think it's time we look at the table because it is the end of september why do i sound so condescending saying all this stuff <laughs> we are 12th place in the league we're tied with Udinese and Bologna who all have seven points just like us but we are right below Galliari who are 11th with eight points and you know i mean i would say this is a pretty good start for us so far we're nowhere well we are pretty decently close to the relegation zone but at least we're not in the relegation zone or maybe two positions away from the relegation zone so i would say this is a pretty good start so far it's the other verona now Helas Verona. Venezia on the attack, it's the 42nd minute. This was a rather interesting and intense match, but it's a through ball to Sotil. Sotil, right at the keeper. Now we go into the second half. Once again, it's Venezia. It's Zuccolini to Capello, who takes the shot right at the keeper. And then 67 minutes played. Once again, Venezia on the attack. Although it looks like we got the most attacks, I mean, Helas Verona had actually most of the possession. Nonetheless, it's Fiorellino to Zuccolini. He threads it out to Capello, and Capello this time, instead of taking the shot tramps it to Zuccolini and we have the 1-0 victory just like that our second victory in the Serie A it's still looking pretty promising for us so far youth academy we finally have it that's right boys and we have Marco Rossi who's looking pretty promising let me tell you right mid exactly what we need 69 rated to 96 potential pretty good 59 rated overall so far looking good I mean he could literally be a backup already but let me actually add a little bit to this as well. So we're going to try something new with the uh, Youth Academy players now. 
basically, I'm gonna let you guys make a storyline for the Youth Academy players. And if they aren't terribly stupid, I might add that into the player's character development or whatever. Nicknames included. Sassuolo. 15 minutes into the match, it's Mbayo creating this attack for... Never mind, it's Sassuolo on the ball now. It's Lirola to Andrada, and Babacar makes it 1-0 to Sassuolo already. 37 minutes played, it's Sassuolo once again. It's Andrada to Locatelli. Locatelli then passing it to Andrada. Great ball to him. He takes the shot, and it's way over the bar. Sassuolo, we're not done trying to get that second goal, though. But Riccardi with the inch-perfect tackle, passing it to Mbayo. Back to Riccardi, to Capello. It's out to Mbayo. And Mbayo, what can he do with it? Well, he sees Ricardo Sotillo making the run. So what's he going to do? He's going to try and cross it in. It's not a very good cross, but what's this? A penalty. And what's this? Oh, I can't wait to show you. Boom, red card. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's Sotil with the shot into the back of the net to make it one all. And once again, we escape with another penalty. But hey, man, you gotta score somehow in some way. And Ricardo Sotil is burying them so far. But of course, Venezia weren't just gonna go for one point. We're trying to go for the maximum here, guys. It's Riccardi to Marco Modolo. Whips in a little threaded ball to Lolo. Lolo crossing in for Capello. And Capello. Oh. Oh, that's just unfortunate. But it's the 87th minute. You can feel your veins fill up with wiseness somehow, as the sensei goes into the box, passing it to Capello, saved by the keeper. Capello tries again, not work out, and he tries once again because this game is so broken and decides to tackle the player from behind. And what's this? Well, a second yellow card and a red card for Alessandro Capello. And what does that mean? Well, he misses the next match against... <laughs> Juventus! Yeah, I didn't really expect much.